Hey guys, today I'm going to make a very compelling case against the collector's booster boxes that are being promoted to you and being sold to you en masse. First of all, if you told me when I first started playing Magic that such a collectible booster pack would exist and one way to get it is to go to Walmart and buy it, I would laugh even as five, even five years old, four years old, I wouldn't believe you because it just sounds so weird. First and foremost, uh, when I played Magic, we didn't have Mythics. Mythics is a gimmick. It's not a surprise that some of the strongest cards are Mythics, right? Duh, because that's a way to get you to buy more packs because you need four of that Mythic. Typically, you need four of that Mythic, like JSD Mind Sculptor was the mythic that produced a lot of trouble until he eventually was banned in standard back in the day. I mean, he was uh, above $100 as a standard card that you needed four of to be competitive. Now, we have the gimmick of the mythic of mythics, the masterpiece, which is one in every few cases, or one in two to three in a case. So one in every two to three booster boxes will have one of these mythics of mythics, right? Now we have something where it's even more outrageous. There's only 12 packs. Do you guys realize that the cardboard that they're saving, yes, they have to put some shiny stuff, but the you're getting 12 packs and each of the packs have the same foil land that look like Pokemon cards. They have typically the variance is not very high because every pack has multiple mythics, potentially multiple foil mythics and rares. And you're just de demolishing the set value because it's no longer special to get a foil mythic. It's just buy this special box and you can get as many of them as you want. And that's a problem. So you would have to be very foolish to buy this type of collector's box or booster box. And I'll get into why people are buying this product, even though logically the product is really, really bad. I mean, there's 12 packs in the product. It's foil this, foil that. And I can tell you, game stores do not want to carry six different versions of the same card. Because it's impossible to inventory. It's impossible to sell. Unless you are a big online company or you're selling boxes of this crap. You, can, you cannot convince me this is a good idea. And the reason that a lot of you have no idea how bad it is, is because rotation is not upon us. Many of the people buying these cards have no idea. They're not... They're not old Magic players. They don't know what's going to happen in a few months. What's going to happen in a few months is what happens in every single set. Except this is going to be more extreme. You pay two times the price for one third the cards. Do you realize how ridiculous that sounds? Yes, there's foils and mythics and foil mythics. Correct. But this is actually just a reprint of a standard set being sold as a premium product at Walmart. We all know my feelings about Walmart and premium products. No. No other card, baseball, basketball, football, would ever dare do something this stupid. Seriously, go to your Walmart. See what the most expensive pack of baseball, football, or basketball cards is. Probably no more than... When I mean pack, I mean single pack. Of course, there's like, you know, the boxes for 20 bucks and so on, which have multiple packs in them, but single pack. No, that's not going to happen. And yet, this premium product is in every gift item, a gift bundle, whatever it's called. I can prove to you right now there's a serious problem with this container. This box should never get below $240. And let me explain why. In the gift bundle, 
you have a fat pack worth $40 and then you have a collector's booster pack. So the collector's booster pack in the gift bundle has a value of $20. Because the only difference between a bundle, a regular bundle, and your gift bundle is the collector's pack. Now, yes, you get a shiny box. I mean, there's, there's non-significant differences in the, the product. But the main difference is that booster pack, which now has a value of $20. The problem is Throne of the Alderaan was selling booster packs for $30, $25. It, it's insane. Standard should not be a place where you pay $200 for 12 packs. And yes, I do know they're special packs, but nonetheless, you can't really draft with them. Um, I mean, you, I, I imagine that you couldn't because, I mean, I guess you could, but typically when you draft, you have commons. And you wouldn't draft normally with them. They're not being bought by your store. I mean, I guarantee you, go to your local game store, sell some of these uh, collectors. They're not going to buy it. Why would I inventory six different types of the same card? It's going to be, it's already difficult for me to move product. Now you want to, me to move and in, in, in stock six of the same product? It's insane. No, I don't want to stay on standard product. This will bankrupt a ton of local game stores. Because what's going to happen is those dumb dumb stores ordered a ton of this product and it's going to sit there. Just like Dragon Maze. You know, there's there's actually a product worse than this, and that's why I want to get to. I think the next product will be by far the worst of the bunch. And I'm almost certain that that product will be the end-all, be-all of local game stores. Because they're going to buy a ton of the product, and they're just like Dragon Maze, just like RTR, just like Gate, they're still going to be stuck with boxes and boxes of crap. And the problem is the same problem I've always had with the rest of the Magic community. Um, everyone's greedy and everyone wants to make money. I remember Hour of Devastation. I told people that was the suckiest pro I had never seen this. This is this bad. This is bad, bad, bad. This is Dragon Maze level bad. But people kept pushing it and saying, oh, look at this. And look at." And then, you know, look at where it is today. Yeah, you have Anointed Procession and a few other EDH cards. But like, what else? Like, seriously, what else? Or Battle for Zendikar. I mean, yes, Pioneer has helped its prices a little bit. But, I mean, gosh, it's terrible. And now people are protecting these. You know why they do it, right? It, it's super obvious why they do it. If you can convince someone to buy a $100 product, why not convince them to buy 200 300 400 500 You know that you're paying... In terms of what you're buying, you're paying for one of these boxes. You can get a Nintendo Switch, right? Like le legit. You can buy a Google Chromebook or something like that. Maybe an older version of the iPhone. This is not normal. It is not normal for someone to pay $200, $300 for a standard box of 12 booster packs. People are going to hype this product like there's no tomorrow. And you know they're going to hype it and say, oh, look at this one booster pack. And it's all the amazing cards in it. And this one booster pack alone is $400. Yeah, that's true. But how many booster packs do you have to open to get that one booster pack? <laughs> Statistics. Math. As long... I would never... To see... To come to today is just so painful to me that people are paying 200 300 dollars for standard boxes that will be decimated into oblivion and beyond no, trust me on this one i will laugh so hard at everyone who bought a throne of the elder end box and opened it or this collector's box and opened it at rotation you will see prices tank on a scale that is un unheard of because those cards are starting off much higher than normal cards for standard. I can tell you what cards see play in Pioneer and Modern. Because guess what? If a card like Oko is good, it will see play in Pioneer and Modern. 
So if it's already not seeing play in Pioneer Modern, it's not going to see play in Pioneer Modern. Duh. So my end conclusion is a lot of stores, because of the hype and because they're dumb, will have a ton of this product. They won't be able to move it. Some people on YouTube will be able to move t metric tons of this product. But a store is not going to because they have overhead. They cannot... When you get into a match of who can go lowest, the local game store has no chance of winning that match because they have overhead, they have employees, they have internet, they have cable, they have bathrooms to take care of. This is all a ploy to bankrupt your local game store. I can only see this. And the more you buy from those you know, YouTubers or Card Kingdom or Channel Fireball, from Amazon, your local game store is doomed, and you're the one who did it. You're the reason your local game store is going out of business. Because every time you buy from Amazon, or Rudy, or eBay, or some somewhere that's not your local game store, what you're saying is, you know what, that place I play at, I don't care. I'm just going to buy the cheapest price. And that is your right, but don't complain when your local game store no longer exists. I don't see any YouTubers, I don't see any personalities, I don't see any MPL members Support saying, hey, support your local game store. I don't see Wizard Coast doing this either. Well, I can't wait. I cannot wait for that day. Because I truly believe that without your local game store, Magic will just move on digitally because there's no place to play. Hi, guys. <laughs>